All right, so here's our first example. Um, we're going to try to find the equation of a line, right? So these, these differences down here, right? These will typically be given values like a, b, c, right, for this, for this vector v. So often we write say, a, b, c. And that direction vector, it's typically, well, not always, but in many cases, given to you, like in this particular problem here, right? Um, so in this problem, we want to give the equation now. In the textbook, they ask for all forms. Um, the vector equation, the parametric equations, and then the symmetric equations. I'm going to skip the symmetric equations because I, um, I don't know. I, I personally don't find that I have a use for them, but um, other people do find them useful. So if you like it, go for it. Uh, so vector equation looks like this. We can almost just write it down immediately. There's, there's much less work than you might think to write it down. Um, the line passes through this point. P, 2, 3, 1. That gives us this initial point on the line, right? Gives us these, these values, gives us this vector, P naught. So all we really have to do here is just take that point and write it as a vector, right? So here's the, uh, what we called P naught in the initial setup, okay? Plus T times V. And v is given to us as 1, minus 1, 1, and 2. Okay. So there is your, your v, if you like. Right. And so if you're, if you're given that information out of the box, then that's it. You just write it down. You're done. There's nothing more to do. Um, most of the time, you're going to be given some other information, right? There's going to be some work that you got to do to come up with the line. But this time, they gave us all the, you know, it's like being told the slope and the intercept and saying, write the equation of a line in two dimensions. You can just write it down. Now, uh, if we wanted to get sort of the parametric form, what you can do is, is just, we do a bit of vector algebra. Let me do it in steps here just to kind of show you how this works. We can multiply the t through minus t, t, 2t. And now we just add the corresponding entries, right? 2 minus t, 3 plus t. So I was getting ahead of myself. Starting to write the 2 for the next term. 3 plus t, 1 plus 2t. All right, so we can write that down. And so this is, let's just copy the left-hand side so we can see it more easily. That's x, y, z. Um, we have an equality of vectors. And vectors are equal if the corresponding components are equal. And so from here, we can directly write down the corresponding parametric equations. So x is 2 minus t. y is 3 plus t. And z is going to be 1 plus 2t, right? Um, if you want to, if, well, you know, let's do the symmetric equations just this once, just to see how it works. Um, the, the idea with the symmetric equations for a line, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for t in each of these equations. Um, now, it could be that, um, you know, t might not appear in one of the equations because you could have zero as one of the components in your direction vector, uh, and then you'd have to leave that one out. Um, but you know, in this case, if we if we solve for t, right, um, t would be x minus two over minus one, and it's also equal to y minus three over one, if you like, and then it's also equal to z minus one over 2, right? And so the symmetric equations, we, we ignore the t, we eliminate the parameter, and we just say, well, all those three quantities have to be equal. Um, so now, if we want to know whether that point q is on the line, well, there are a few ways to do it, right? Um, one is to try it here, right, with that as my x, my y, and my z. And so I say, okay, so minus 1 minus 2 over minus 1, and then 6 minus 3, and um, 6 minus 1 over 2. Well, 
see pretty clearly these aren't confusing you. That's three. That's three. Oh, but this is five over two, right? Um, so we can't realize those values for the same parameter, right? All of them should be equal to the same value of that parameter t. So the point q is not on the line. Right? Uh, another way you can do it is simply you, know, you can come back to, for example, the, the vector equation or here. Right? If you plug those values in, you plug in the minus 1, the 6, and the 6, you can plug those in and solve for t in each equation. Right? Um, but you have to get those values for the same parameter t in all three equations. Right? It has to be the same t. Remember that it's really just one vector equation, even though we have three scalar equations. Um, and so you can plug those values in, solve for t, and pretty quickly realize that um, the same value of t is not going to work for all three of those equations.